And uh, other interesting news, uh, it was reported that uh, Capcom made a special announcement, but it ended up being a leak. Street Fighter V is indeed a thing, and while there's not a lot of footage of it yet, so there's only little snippets of it, and it looks really good. There's not as much of a departure from Street Fighter IV as I was hoping, but the art style has improved quite a bit. You're losing a lot of that kind of way too meat-headed look, where they were their heads were about uh, half the size of their biceps sort of thing. So they're, yeah. they're, they're improving that part of it. But the real kicker was the announcement that it's PS4 and PC only. No Xbox? No Xbox. That's and surprising. it's not being listed as an, an exclusivity type of thing either, so... Hmm. Hmm, indeed. And some positive news out of the whole Gamergate stuff. Uh, the FTC actually was called against Gawker, and uh, Gawker had to change a lot of their stuff because of it. They were doing illegal Excuse stuff. Me. Unfortunately, it does not sound like they got fined like they should have, but uh, they're having to be a lot more clear about who they're linking to is who they're actually being sponsored by and who they own, which they did not do before. Yeah, and stop breaking the law. So yeah, Polygon and Kotaku, don't tell me that there's not problems. Yeah. I'm I, not buying it. Neither am I. We know that there are, though. That's why we talk about it. Mm-hmm. And other than that, that's really all the news that popped out. I mean, oh, uh, there's little stuff, but... My uh, my buddy Nil, uh, I guess he's getting he's making a map for the new UTK that's coming out, mm-hmm. and apparently one of his one of the maps he made is going to be a stock map, which means it's going to be one of the maps... That the game's free anyway, so when you come out and choose and look for the maps, his map is one of them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Excellent. That's good publicity for him. Mm-hmm. I know he's put a lot of work into that. He's been working on that since yeah, yes. spring? He's, well, I don't know spring, but he's been working on this new map constantly. I just know. He's been in direct contact with, with, with Unreal. Or whoever owns Unreal. Easy, Mike. Sorry. Tossing boxes on our head like printies. <laughs> Wait. Hey, I nobody exploded, so we're oh, good. Yeah. No, no explosions. Yeah, he also fixes bugs in it, too, so there you go. Ooh, bug hunters. Yeah. Need some bug spray. Bug good. Get the raid! We need all the bug hunters we can get in video games. Yes, we do. That is no joke. Oh, they're still going to release them half-finished, so... <laughs> oh, they, yeah, they will anyways, but at least this lowers Joke. the chance by a couple point point I mean, speaking, point zero zero 0.001% chance. Speaking about that, probably the best analogy I've ever heard for that came from Boogie on his YouTube channel. He did, he did it twice. He did it on one of his, his you know normal Boogie videos, and then he did it on a Francis Rage video. He compared a buggy, unfinished game that was released to a really crappy cheeseburger that you were served in a fast food restaurant. He was like, you wouldn't go back to that restaurant, would you? Yeah, most of us probably wouldn't. So why do we keep going back to the games? Because there's nobody else. Stupid. But there is. There are so many other games and so many other game companies. How many games do you have in your Steam library right now that you oh, have not Oh, beaten? now you sound like one of those Gamergate people. What are you talking about inclusivity? Stop no. raping. No, wait, what? <laughs> So I'm just saying, I have so many games in my Steam library that I want to play, mm-hmm. but these new games keep coming out. Mm-hmm. But, you yes. know, in my defense, I did not buy Assassin's Creed Unity. I did not buy the Master Chief Collection. And I did not buy Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. So, I at least feel that I chose wisely when I bought Super Smash Bros. and it worked fine out of the box. Mm-hmm. So, I feel good about that. And Alien Isolation didn't have any problems either. I want to play that game so badly. It's it's actually really fun. It's just, it, I'm one of those it people. It seems like a movie to me. That's more it is. More, yeah. Yeah, you feel like, like if you're a fan of the Alien movies, you actually am. feel like you are on the Alien. You're, you're in that universe. That's what I, it feels I like got to, to play that game. I got to the part where you get into the space station and you're in the minor space station. Someone that was watching me, they're like, you're supposed to advance. I'm like, I'm searching this entire spaceship because it's yeah. that awesome looking. It That's looks just like movie of the ship. It's a game that you wouldn't normally hunt around in, but because of the universe and the realism, like the way it's so faithful to the, the source material, it makes you want yeah. to explore. So that's I, really I cool. Spent at least an hour just roaming the beginning spaceship just staring at stuff just like that is exactly how I expect it to look and you mm. can feel the warm grins of the people who put in all those extra details that usually gets overlooked in games like that just beaming oh they can. appreciate my work I bet Yay. you can't they're they're probably ecstatic about how that game was received by the community especially in light of you know colonial marines <laughs> <laughs> But I, I digress. I just think that if we keep buying these unfinished buggy games, just because it isn't, you know, the brand that it is, we're going to keep getting unfun- unfinished buggy games. Mm-hmm. We need to take back this crappy cheeseburger that we bought and make them remake it. <laughs> and I think this whole thing with the Kickstarter green light stuff, where all these people were basically paying full price for these alphas that may never get finished, I think there's been such a backlash of that recently. They were starting to see it actually affect the AAA stuff more of two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it's starting to come to an end. The people 
people are getting tired of it. Yeah, rightly so. I mean, it's one thing to get patches for stuff that is unforeseen, but when you're releasing games you know have issues in it, and it's going to affect your sales, it's it might insulting. be wiser to keep the game a little bit longer and fix it. There's a reason people love Blizzard and Valve. They do and that. Nintendo. And it's yeah, a little forgivable in uh, the sandbox Apple type of games systems. because they're such a big game, and it's hard to get everything functioning. So I, I give those, especially when it comes to the physics stuff, because sometimes that's the best part of like the Grand Theft Autos and the Skyrims and all that is when something goes completely berserk and makes you crack up. It's kind of worth it. The, f- yeah. the Grand Theft Auto, the best bug, the one that uh, it's just one that they, they didn't discover is the one that causes you to stretch out and then sends you flying across the map. I remember seeing the video of that. I spent hours doing that stuff. And, but yeah, I mean, I think in the older games you would you, you didn't see a lot of that because one, you were in completely out of your mind if you released a game back then and didn't like crazy thoroughly checked for something game breaking because there was no patch. Yeah. It was screwed. Well, that's another interesting thing about, you know, developing games and the relationship between the consumer and the retailer. You open that game, best you can get back out of it is a game exchange. You know, exchange mm-hmm. it for a new one of the same title. They're not going to give you your money back on an open video game because they don't know that you have played it and it doesn't work. They're, they're going to automatically assume, oh, he just played it, now he wants his money back so he can get another one. Mm-hmm. Or they're going to assume piracy. Right. So and There's cases of both, but there are. It's just unfortunate that there's nothing you can do in that circumstance to actually force them to realize, you know, hey, you sold me a crappy game because it's not them. It's it's the developers. You can't send it back to them for a refund either. So And all the more reason why they want to make everything it's digital. It's a torturous process. Because the more digital it is, the less hard copy you have. Exactly. So you don't even get the resale value out of it. And this is why I'm against everything being digital, because if I get a crap game, I'm stuck with it. I don't mind paying a dollar for a crap game if there's some kind of humor I can get out of it, but a full-blown $60 title that I can't play the way it's supposed to be played, I would be raging. Mm-hmm. SimCity 2013. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the thing that scares me about the always online stuff, because a yeah. lot of it is just for the DRM purposes, but, you know, there's a lot of multiplayer stuff that's really opening up with these new consoles, and it's a brave new venture for them, but at the same time, they need to keep modes for people that do not want that in their game. You can have your cake and eat it, too, with that type of stuff. You don't have to force the online on people. I am so happy for the Skylines. <laughs> so happy. It won't be out for a little while, but... Not so at least, what was it, March or April? Something like that. But alas, we're actually running longer than I expected us to. It's amazing! Yeah, we actually had some things to talk about. Kind of yeah. wormed around on a rabbit trail, but... Much talks. But I think we'll be back for one more week. If not, I'll try to make at least an announcement video before then, because we may lose Grover before then, and Mike's we can Grover stuff's tonight. going on, and I've got other things going on, too, so it may be a little crazy, but I think we'll be back for one more week before we start our vacation, that we know we're going to be gone. <laughs> and uh, we'll come back when we come back. Grover's it'll, sad, forced vacation. It'll After prob- the new year. Yeah, it'll probably be on the looking at this, it'll be on the 9th, so it, it'll be about three weeks, four if we don't come back next week, so it'll be almost a month. But you can contact us with Prinny... You can contest with Prinnycast. Yep, sure can. You can follow <laughs> us on Twitter at Prinnycast, and you can contest us with... Contest us. I did it again. Contest. Contact. Chris is being competitive. 321 contest. Yes. You can contact us with email at Prinnycast at gmail.com, and I will be checking at least the email stuff. Our Twitter just kind of gets abandoned. I'm sorry. I do the same thing with my music stuff. It just... It's there. Facebook. I, I don't even pay attention to my own <laughs> Facebook, so... But I do check the Gmail address quite regularly because there's some stuff that's tied into that so and we've still got the google plus account thing but that, that's more for the people who <laughs> already do us best. yeah the facebook that never was but yeah even though it's shoved down our throats but yeah <laughs> we'll see you all next time one way or the other folks see, see you next time, time. Ooh, stereo later dudes